So many of the stars are gone, but the most important one, not the biggest, is still there. Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and yes, we are here today to talk about Jordan Clarkson, which you may all be going, really? But trust me on this one. But before we get into the meat of this, just one huge big favour to ask anyone tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have already, please tell your friends. We're on that road to 1,000. That's the difference between us making money and not, so please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get our videos as soon as they drop. And yeah, today we are talking about Jordan Clarkson because he is by far and away the most important player at the 2023 FIBA World Cup. Maybe not the best, certainly not the most famous, but the most important. But in order to understand that, we need to go back in time a bit. So it's really, really hard to say what basketball is in the Philippines. It's just enormous. Like the, it, Imagine a country several times the size of Lithuania, understatement by the way, Philippines, and just as passionate for this game. It is extraordinary. It's been huge there pretty much before it was anything in Europe, like it's, uh, or anywhere in the world apart from North America. Obviously it was a US influence in the Philippines that brought basketball there, and by the 1910s it was already picking up. They won a load of regional championships. Indeed, the regional championship at the time, all the editions of it that existed, Philippines men won all of them. Uh, that was at the beginning of the Gilas Filipinas journey. And it's just really, really gone on from there. They've had just this love affair with the sport that has taken hold. And they've had so many firsts or so many bests when it comes to basketball in Asia. They were obviously the first Asian side to play basketball in the Olympics. They were the first Asian nation to have a professional league. They won the first Asian Games. They won the first Asian Cup. They have the best ever record of an Asian side at both the Olympics and the FIBA World Cup or FIBA World Championships as it was then. And oh yeah, also the first Asian nation to host the FIBA World Cup way back in 78. So saying basketball is important in the Philippines is huge. And this is the first time since 78 that this big one, the FIBA World Cup, has come back to Philippines. Obviously they're co-hosting it with Japan and Indonesia, but all the knockout games, the games that really matter, they're gonna be in the Mall of Asia arena. But of course, it's not just that. So yeah, like it's huge there. It is like their, their life when it comes to sports. Like football is a non-entity in Philippines. Boxing's obviously huge. Everybody knows that Manny Pacquiao. And other sports have got a role there, obviously, but like, you know, you look at a Caloy Lozago, who I'm guessing a lot of you uh, have never heard of. I've absolutely violently mispronounced his name. My apologies to Filipino and Filipina viewers tuning in. Uh, please teach me how to say better words in Filipino and Tagalog when I get to fill into to Manila in a, in a short while. But, you know, his influence, like, across, like, you know, generations, really, as a baller, has shaped so much. He was uh, very classic in the Philippine sense in that he is, it was 6'2 slash 6'3, depending on how you call it, but he also played center, so undersized, like, sort of a precursor to Kyle Hines. But even at, like, the, in his, well into his 30s, he was winning big championships with Philippines. He was there, a two-time Olympian, so there's this legacy there, and obviously Philippines is also home to the world's largest dedicated basketball arena, Philippine Arena. It's 55,000 people it can take. And it's going to be one of the venues, oddly not the main venue, at the World Cup that's coming up. And we, yes, I know this is a Jordan Clarkson video, but we're getting to that because the key one is Philippines is playing probably its biggest game, indeed its biggest game in a long time in basketball, not just at this World Cup, in Philippine Arena at the very, very start of the tournament. And that's when we get to Jordan Clarkson. So for those of you who don't know, Jordan Clarkson uh, well, is sorry, a superb point guard for the Utah Jazz. Jazz obviously didn't the postseason this year, but they were just broadly improved across the board. Clarkson had career bests in rebounds and assists. Started 61 games, uh, the same as the number of games he played. So we started every game he played for the Jazz this season. And has just really been the guy but he had to wait a while in order to play for Philippines because even though under other sports rules, simply having a Filipina mother would have been enough, 
basketball's a bit different. So because you're allowed to naturalize one player who can be from anywhere and you can give them a passport and say they are from here now, it's in order to help teams get better at certain positions. Basketball has sort of a counter rule to ensure that teams don't overload with people of that nation's descent elsewhere around the world. Uh, Ireland's felt this, by the way. We have Neil Quinn playing for Ireland, and uh, Neil is an Irish passport holder in a traditional eligible sense. In soccer, he wouldn't count as a naturalised player. Unfortunately, in basketball, he very much does because he was after the age of 16, which is the key age, when he got his passport. So was Jordan Clarkson. So Jordan is the naturalised player for Gilas Filipinas, and he's hugely important for them. Like, there are very few teams that can call on an NBA caliber starting point guard at this World Cup. I don't think there's... Can Japan? I don't know. Because who isn't a point guard? No, there's like nobody else really from the Asian Confederation who can call an NBA caliber starting point guard. Philippines have that. Uh, like He's a very, very proud man of his heritage. He's been trying to play for Philippines since very, very early on. Like I think it was 2010 when he first inquired about it. He certainly wanted to play a few other times. Finally made the breakthrough as an exemption at the Asian Cup Games a couple of, uh, about five years ago and then played in the qualifiers for this tournament. Philippines had automatically qualified as host, but they still played the qualifiers because that's the format FIBA likes to use. So with Jordan, like this is very much a big part of his heritage. You know, he's uh, went to college in Tulsa, played at Missouri, all SEC, has been with the Lakers, best known as the first time as a Jazz now, even though he's with them less time, and obviously he had his Cleveland stint too. But in the Jazz, he has really flourished, and he's played alongside guys who've also played FIBA ball. Walker Kessler, his teammate, he's going to be playing for the USA. Larry Markkinen, superstar for Finland, like, and he has sort of been sort of the icon for Finnish basketball. And Jordan Clarkson, even though he's not born and raised in the Philippines, really believes in his Filipino heritage and wants to sort of you know do his best for his mother's nation and for a nation he is very proud to represent and really though what makes him so important isn't just that he's the best player on the Philippines roster it's that Philippines has a group which is tough but not impossible so they've got Angola, Italy and Dominican Republic and that last one is probably the most important Angola is not going to be an easy out don't get me wrong but Philippines will look at that and go that's a winnable game great they'll probably look at Italy and go that's probably too tough for us. Dominican Republic, that's where things get sketchy. Like on paper, simple as, Dominican Republic will be favourites. But here's what the, and, and they also have a small matter of a Carl Anthony Towns shaped force playing for them, because of course, Cat has his Dominicana heritage as well. So you've got two guys very proud of their heritage leading the nations of their families, really, against each other as their stars. And I suppose the big thing standing out with Jordan, though, is he is the superstar for the effective host of this tournament. So for Philippines, this is really a case of, can we get this W over the Dominican Republic? Well, they're in the best possible situation to do it. So it's the very first game of the tournament, which means like all the Philippines guys, they're used to each other, they're used to the vibe in the greater Manila area in Quezon City, and they, they get it, you know, and Jordan Clarkson gets it culturally. Dominican Republic will, of course, only have been there a short while, so they're still adapting to just being there. But also, and this is kind of a bigger deal, I think it's safe to say, which is why I'm doing that elaborate uh, scratching of my neck there. Yeah, there's going to be 55,000 absolutely fanatical Philippines basketball fans in that arena. And that has got to be worth a few points in the scoreboard, because this is the chance for Philippines to do something crazy and get to a last 16 of a World Cup. Like, it's something we haven't discussed in ages. Like, Philippines, when it comes to winning big titles, big medals, it's been a while since they had any gold at the serious level in Asia. They've obviously gotten sub-region goals, obviously, and done very, very well. But China's kind of stolen their thunder there. Obviously, Iran is very strong as well. And other nations have come and gone in terms of their level of strength. Obviously, Japan is a, is a rising force in the sport. But for Philippines, it's a case of, well, you know, you all might be playing basketball, but we live basketball. We breathe basketball. And that's, I think, one of the things that makes Jordan Clarkson so important because he is a guy going into that culture, a culture where it's probably even more passionate about hoops than anything he's ever experienced in the U.S. And this is a guy who's played basketball his whole life, and he's 30 years old now. And he's in a team and a culture where 
this sport is just so important and I think that is what's going to make him so so important because literally game one Jordan Clarkson has a chance to become a national hero in Philippines the nation of his mother you know one of the two nations he calls home and um, it's an incredible opportunity for what I would call a young man because I'm a lot older than Jordan and I really hope he if, I'm not going to say I hope X beats Y wins or losses but I really hope Jordan has a great game and inspires so many other young not just bowlers in Philippines because let's be honest Philippines you got plenty of people inspiring all over Philippines all the time because PBA wild stuff with my favorite name team in the whole of sports the San Miguel Beer Men just perfect uh, what a name but he can inspire so many you know children of Philippines descent outside of Philippines to kind of go hey that guy's like me you know he's Filipino heritage playing for our home nation they love him he's doing well for them he's inspiring them maybe I should take more of that and maybe hopefully more of those young people who see Jordan at the World Cup wearing the Philippines jersey will go I should get that passport and like people in the community around the world will go and make sure you get it before you're 16 because like the difference as we could see because imagine if it was Jordan plus one other naturalized player the difference would be extraordinary so wishing all the best to Jordan no matter what the results are for Philippines I hope he sets a great example for them at this World Cup that's it for this video but obviously we talk about Jordan who's the most important player the biggest star at the World Cup is in a video that should be linking around there and please remember to subscribe